Discount Podcast. Welcome in, you cheap beggars, to Discount, the Bargain Bin Gaming Podcast, hosted by three hosts, so cheap that if they get egged on Halloween, they'll be keeping them for breakfast. <laughs> I am your host, Josh, and sat next to me, plugging into Player 2... I'm Darren. Hello. And sitting in her Overwatch queue for five hours, I need to play support again. <laughs> it's me. I'm always support. It's scary. That laugh comes from pain. That, that it is, is. It's very big. That is a suffer. Um, <laughs> yes, and welcome into our first ever episode of Free Talk Freebies. It'd be good if I came up with an idea of what the name was before we did it, but yeah, it's our... Oh, our freebies. Uh, Freebies. It's our October reflection month, or something like that. I oh don't know, God. like like meditation. It yeah. feels like the therapy. What's yeah. your October yeah. reflection? Well, um, I felt at the beginning that I was mm. taking too much on at work, <laughs> um, which is not true. But that's fine. But yeah, this is our episode where we talk about all sort of news that came out in the month that means something mm-hmm. to us. Games we played, the PS Plus lineup, so free games that have come out there. And just have a bit of a chat rather than focusing on buying each other cheap games to beat each other with. So please stick along and uh, join us for this ride as we try and see if this is a good format. And you can go, no, you're bad. Go back to what you were doing. <laughs> we want Jump Force in the main episode again. Uh, always <laughs> Jump Force. Um, but yeah, so it's been an interesting month in general, October, uh, for yeah. news-wise, for gaming. Um, you'll have all probably already heard these things, but there are, we've, we've all p- selected some things that all means a little something to us and I think it was probably good to like go through it in the order they happened I mean the first thing that happened this month was, was it's, um, it Stadia was it? oh god Stadia died Stadia yeah. died which um, I don't think anyone was shocked at I mean no. listen I, can I be perfectly honest with you both the first thing I ever heard about Stadia was this month hearing about the death of Stadia <laughs> I, I had no idea this existed until it died I remember Stadia <laughs> launching and everyone went uh, it's fine. It doesn't work in places like Australia where the internet's not very good. Yep. It's like a fine idea. And then radio silence for three years. About that, yeah. And then it came out and went, oh, Stadia's dead. Went, I thought it was. But it's, thought it was already. But it's bad for all the people who obviously own it. So the idea was you buy a game and it would always be online yeah. and you could just cloud stream it at any point. And it was yeah. it was Google, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was Google. Um, who did it. And basically no one bought into it, but there were some people who bought into it massively have a thousand games on there yeah. and now they've lost everything that they put money into. It was like the same concept of it's like your own personal game pass. You yeah. You could just have it always mm-hmm. online, you could have it always available and then you just sort of pick into it wherever you connect and you don't okay. have anything downloaded, you don't have to have anything physical other than the stadium itself, obviously. Yeah. But it was all just streaming, it was all online, so it seemed like a lightweight way to do things. Okay. It felt like they were trying to jump on the whole, you know, Netflix is streaming, everything is streaming for video and film, like the next thing has to be game, and you look at your Game Pass has been a massive success for Xbox. Mm-hmm. Xbox is, yeah. I mean, really, it's its flagship property, I would say, is Game Pass, which is, yeah. is sad to That's say. That's what they want to be. Yeah. yeah. They want to be an online streaming thing. I mean, the news came out that they tried to pitch that to Sony, and Sony said, no, no. jog on. But... It just didn't work, Stadia. And yeah. you go, oh, it's dead. That's a shame. But then now you're hearing rumours that Netflix are planning on doing the same thing. Yeah, it's... I mean, it, it, it doesn't shock me that Netflix would try that. What shocks me is that they would see what happened to Stadia and think, yeah, well, yeah let's I, carry on. <laughs> I think Netflix already do in some markets the game stuff I heard mm. about. Well, they, they, do on, they do some crappy online, like Stranger Things games mm. that they've made. But what they actually... I, th- I think there's actual games you can get through Netflix in some places. I'm sure I've read about this. But I, oh. the thing about Netflix as well is that if they roll in with the Netflix subscription, mm. they already have the base. Yeah. yeah. Like, Google has a lot of users, but mm. Google doesn't have a lot of what I would say are subscribers. So yeah. Stadia came out as sort of a separate entity of people to buy into. Whereas Netflix buying into it is potentially not the worst idea because there's already people subscribe to Netflix, there's already people who use the Netflix ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. they then loop games into that. It's already it's already set up for them to to just buy into it. But yeah, yeah. Bit... I mean, would you use it if that happened? I mean, they've they've said that it's not meant to rival console gaming, so I don't think it's going to be like a Game Pass. I think you're going to get these little indie developed games yeah. potentially that are mm. sort of budget. And I mean. If it's an add-on to my Netflix account for £2 extra a month or something like that, 
I'll dip my toe in for a few months, see if yeah. it's something that I like, and then I'll make a decision whether I keep it if, or not. If it functions in the same way as Game Pass functions, like for me, where it's just a collective of shit I wouldn't normally buy, yeah, yeah, then yeah, I'll, I'll buy into it, why not? It's the what? same as I use Game Pass for like a month other than to play Diego <laughs> Pinata. But it's just buy like five pound indie games. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's the big thing, isn't it? Is if you've got a... If you've got a PC, then you're pretty much set for your indie games because yeah, yeah. you just go on there and you get them from next to nothing. They're dirt cheap and it's fine. But if you're a console gamer almost exclusively, then this seems like a nice move. But yeah. Stadia is a big warning that it doesn't always work. You cannot just assume that you're going to be the next Xbox Game Pass and it works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. I just think, yeah, Stadia deserved, not deserved to die, but had no reason to keep surviving. No, I, I think it should have been dead a while ago. And then confirming its death was more admitting it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm it. surprised you said it was three years. Like yeah. I didn't, I didn't think it would have been that long. That's it, a long time. It's weird. Google's a big enough company that this won't really make a huge dent in what they're doing. They could have launched it, seen it was dead in six months, and just gone, "Cool, we're, we're putting yeah. the plug. Yeah. Give you your money back. We'll move on. We made a mistake." In a way, yeah. respect for leaving it for that long so mm. people who had it even if it was dying still got what they paid for yeah, I mean, yeah. Cool. good for them yeah I mean if they're real good guys they would just send everyone who's bought stuff on Stadia a physical copy of their game and undo what they've done yeah <laughs> yeah why not <laughs> but yeah Stadia starts off the month so it starts off on a sour note really this yeah, month and, yeah. then, and I don't I don't think it got better this month until the end, really, but... Um, we sort of wallowed in gaming we for a while. Wallowed in gaming with these sort of weird bits, and then yeah. we started hearing rumours from the East about this PS Stars, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, so I'd forgotten that PS Stars was coming out, honestly. I remember it being announced, and they were like, oh, it's this cool like community loyalty thing. It's coming out in this sort of date. Mm. I was like, okay, I, that sounds interesting, whatever. And then posts were cropping up of like people in... Uh, Asia, where it launched first getting it, I was like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. okay, I've done the same thing for games coming out this month. I'm like, fuck, that's out next week. Yeah, like, what? It, it, I think a lot of a lot of things just snuck up on it. October felt like it was a quiet month, but it actually wasn't no. at yeah, all. Yeah. But um, PS Stars launched. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I, I don't I don't really get the. I mean, I'm in Stars. You're in Stars. I'm yeah. a level two Stars yeah. member. Same, I'm yeah. on Stars. I told me the other day I, I'm a level one Star. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know anything about it. It just popped up and was like, you've got this. And I was like, nice. So it's, it's two things, essentially. Mm. It's a collection of worthless trophies, like yeah. objects, mm. collectibles. On, online collectibles, which is, if you're on PS Stars, you probably are chasing trophies anyway. So you're yeah. like, oh yeah, I'll do that. And, and loyalty points. And loyalty yeah. points, which is the more important bit yeah. of so it. So what do you get for the loyalty points? You can exchange a certain number of loyalty points for either full games or PlayStation Store credit. Well, I think that's sweet. I think so that's cool. The, yeah. the point numbers are fine. People yeah. have been playing you don't get enough. I think it's fine. I bought a £70 game yep. and got 700 points. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I worked this out. 250 points is a pound. Oh, okay. So you get about two pound fifty each. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's just it's yeah it's just so again you buy the new Modern Warfare, which is what I think you yeah, bought, yeah, and, and I did as well. We both get other things, and we go all right. We've basically got you know seven pounds off our next game, yeah. or sorry, something like that, where you've, you're getting yeah, close, you uh, with three pounds up to. It. So it all builds in, and then there are ones where you get a code, or you can get a game, and sometimes it's better value. I mean, there was a mistake, wasn't the, there? Yeah, uh, where... it's still wrong, but the exchange rate between points and games is slightly fucked right. because it's based on the american prices for games so the one i noticed it on is uh cold, cold. Lam, yeah mm. which you can buy full for around six thousand points yep cold of the lamb is 20 pounds a 20 pound playstation store voucher is five thousand points the difference is because in the US, Cold for Lamb is $25, mm -hmm. and they've just one to one it. Right. So you can make, not make money, but you can gain the system if you play yeah. it right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, and, and then they've got challenges in there as well, which is for these collectibles. So, mm. like, um, but they are, I, I thought they were fun. One of them was that record player where you had to work out the game that they were talking about, and then you launch that game, and it goes collected, collected, and you have to yeah. collect six of these to get this reward. Um, which was fun, but it was buggy still. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit weird. Because Death Stranding was one of them. I launched the PS4 version that I'd purchased. I thought, this will do. Yep. Nothing happened, but it's clearly 
Mm. Death Stranding. And then I went, all right. Then I had to end up streaming the collector's edition on PS5 version. The director's cut one. Director's cut one yeah. to make sure that uh, th- then it popped. And I was like, what's... Go-? So they, yeah. there's a li- there's, it's a little buggy, but it's launch time. It's a gimmick, really. Yeah. Apart from that, talk about you potentially get better customer service the higher up you are in PS Stars. That's a bit weird, but it's... You you get priority, which I'm I'm not super mad about, because mm. in theory, to get to level four, you have to buy like four games and get like a hundred trophies. Yeah. Okay. Which is, if you've bought four games and you've played them to the extent that you've got a hundred trophies, and that means you get like a two place head start in a uh, customer service queue. Yeah. Fucking sure. Yeah. Like... Not that you deserve it, but you've no. earned it. <laughs> the only issue, I think, is that it dismisses those who buy physical games. Yeah, and that's it really like, does. That's so the you're biggest like, problem. I'm, you buy a physical game, it doesn't redeem it as points because you've not bought it through the store. Which I understand why they don't. But why does that not go, oh, you've launched a new game you've never played before. Here's some bonus to your star yeah, rating sort the, of thing. Um, Nintendo Loyal Program used to do this really well. Where okay. physical games would come with a code in the box. And you'd enter that code in, and then you would get the points you owed. So as long as you weren't buying pre-owned games, yeah, yeah. You'd if be... you bought it new, or you, if you bought it online, obviously you got... Well, this is back in the day when online stores weren't really a thing. I mean, Nintendo's online store store isn't really a it's, thing. It's fine. <laughs> it functions, that's all I ask of it. But um, yeah, they would come with like a code in the box that you would then enter into it, and you would get your loyalty points. And I think if they did something like that, or you enter in like the fucking barcode or something and you get your loyalty points but well yeah. I mean everything's, everything's linked to the phone now what's the stop you going yeah access to my camera you just scan the barcode it goes yeah this hasn't been redeemed but then by yeah. the same token what's the stop someone walking through a shop and scanning every single barcode yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. because there would be people out like yeah. that I, I think the way to do it is like the uh, Nintendo way of put the code in the box yeah enter in the code get your points because it I, I like having games physically I've enjoyed updating my game shelf mm-hmm. but now that there's an online loyalty program. I suppose the point is as well that if you're buying physical, you can shop around and get it cheaper. Yeah, yeah. So you probably make back the amount you're saving in points by buying physical. By buying physical anyway. I mean, that was it, it was the reason I bought Modern Warfare online, like digitally rather than physically. So I went, yeah. well, I might as well just get the points and then it's good to go, you know, yeah, rather yeah. than a physical copy. But also, it's not really a game you share because you can't. No, no. <laughs> you can't really do anything. But with like, it. there is also challenges where you buy. Uh, there's one at the minute, at the time of recording, where you buy specific games and you get bonus points. And that's yeah. fun. And yeah. I'll probably buy one of those because you can't buy it physically anyway. What, okay. Tunic? Tunic, yeah. Tunic, yeah. Uh, which looks good. It's like a little um, fox Zelda clone where you're a little fox. Oh, yeah. cute. Around. Like the, the gimmick of it is you have no instructions. Yeah. And you find instructions while playing that then teach you mechanics you might not have known which let you explore further. Oh, see, I just, in my head, just thought... I am a really easy person to market to because I thought you were literally going to say the gimmick is you're a fox and I was like yeah okay I'm in (laughs) not really a gimmick that is it no it's just a thing that you are I explained explained it to my partner and she wasn't interested and I showed her a picture of the fox she was like oh that's cute (laughs) what are we doing but yeah, yeah I, I, PlayStation Stars, I, I think it's too early to tell if it's good or bad. I think it's something that people will buy into. I don't think the customer service thing's a problem. Oh. I, uh, at the end of the day, if someone's two heads step, stops ahead of me in a customer service queue for PlayStation, I always, I've only contacted PlayStation support, I think, twice in my yeah. life yeah. Um, since I've had it. And that's what, you know, 10 years or something. And, and yeah. You only yeah. contacted like once when, you once had, when you got hacked. When I got hacked. I and they were I've really good, them. actually. I can't fault them, so... But it's the same fight, yeah. I think it will get better. Mm. I think it's fine at the minute. I hope they do more interesting stuff for points, because I want points. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, that's yeah, the only thing I've got, is I want those collectibles. They put a bunch of challenges in, they go, you got 60 days to complete it. I completed it in a day and went, well, what do I do now? So just well, put more they in said they, were gonna do, they said they were going to do cool stuff, like, if a new game comes out like God of War, if you're one of, like, the first hundred people to beat it, or platinum it, you get, like, a bonus. Oh, no. So they said they were <laughs> going to do cool stuff like that on big releases, and then perhaps, like, the community has to work together to get a number of trophies, and then everyone who does that it also, gets that stuff back. Yeah, because the beating it one, again, benefits those buying digital. Yeah. Mm. Because like, if yeah. you're physical, like, I will be for God of War, I'll be sat around waiting for delivery, or show up at nine o'clock at night and go, first day what? And you're like, thanks, Amazon. Yeah. Nailed <laughs> it. Nailed it today. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I... I Jury's out. We'll wait to see where it is. We'll probably yeah. talk about it more next one if they've done something interesting with see God of War, yeah. etc. Our monthly PS Stars update. 
No, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't know, I don't know star update. We'll talk about PlayStations. You can talk about our yeah. star signs. Ooh. Star signs. <laughs> you can do our star signs, Paris, and say what that means. Who Okay. But yeah, that was PlayStation Stars. Yeah. And then we got a bunch of game releases. They moved on. And then we got to spooky season, it felt like, all of a sudden. Ooh, yeah. didn't we? Um, I know one, one of the things came out first, but we'll move to... Resi, I think, because okay. you want to talk about Resi more. I have a and lot of opinions. I, th- I think yeah. we've all... There's a lot more content, shall we say, in the Silent Hill one that came out. So yeah. we can talk in a bit more yeah, detail yeah. about that. So mm. we'll yeah. move to our resident, resident, resident evil. Our resident evil expert. Our resident, <laughs> resident, resident, resident evil expert. Keris, yeah. over to you. Okay, so this... This could take a while. I have a lot of opinions I'd like to share. I'm going to take it back. It back to you, Darren. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have no so, opinions. <laughs> the, the, the Resident Evil showcase, I, I know... We talked about this briefly, Darren, in that we said it was both interesting and uninteresting. Uninteresting only because they gave us exactly what they said they were yeah. going to give us. Yeah. Um, it was n- nothing new. It's stuff that we've known about for months, uh, being the Resi 4 remake and the Resident Evil 8 Gold Edition with a DLC. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about Resi 4 because I don't feel like there's a whole lot to say about it other than it looks fucking yeah. great. Can we say a couple of things about it? It looks It looks, it looks awesome. awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. No, what I mean is that th- yeah. there's nothing really else to say about it. It mm-hmm. looks incredible. I'm really excited to play it. I think it's going to be a really good remake and I think it's one of the best Resident yeah. Evil games. Can't, so, save, can't save the dog anymore though. No. 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 And I'm very know, upset. <laughs> that I saw on IGN earlier and it raised a really good point of the fact that obviously when you are fighting El Giganto the dog comes in to distract you when yeah. you when, when yeah. you're fighting El Giganto and if he is dead if the dog is dead yeah, then what have happens it. then you do like do you um, have a different spoilers for that 18 year old game oh yeah <laughs> but, but also from someone who missed the dog on one of their playthroughs mm. just nothing happens yeah you just fight him okay I'm, I'm sad maybe the ghost of the dog turns up and it's like how could you Oh, oh God. And then oh, that's, attacks you instead. Yeah. That's deep. That's deep. Um, but yeah, no, it just looks, it looks really good. The trailers look absolutely stunning. They've done a really yeah. great job of yeah. just the whole thing looks beautiful and really atmospheric. And there's, it's really nice to see it actually, because you can see how much Resident Evil 8 was an homage to 4 now that mm-hmm. everything has been remastered. And it's lovely. It was just really yeah. cool to watch a trailer. I got like goosebumps and chills and stuff. So I'm excited for my, it. My feeling on it is it does the best thing that people typically say about remakes is that it looks how your brain remembers it. it yes, yeah. absolutely. Out. Fortunately, I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is how yeah. I remember it. I only ever played Resident Evil 4 through once and Same. I loved it. What did you so, play on? Um, oh god, I can't remember now. I played the Wii version. Oh, oh mine was the PlayStation. Trash. Yeah, <laughs> I just great. can't. I can't remember when it came out. I can't remember if it was eighteen years ago. Yeah, so, yeah. So PS4. Yeah, yeah. Was used that to PS2? Be, used to be a GameCube exclusive when it came on the PS2. Well, yeah, it was meant to be That's a GameCube it. exclusive. Yeah. I was like, I was trying to work so in my PS2 brain whether it was, was PS3. Shout, shout out to the uh, Capcom 5. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I'll be honest with you, I think that was actually the first Resident Evil game that I played. Because I played, I remember playing Resident Evil 2 after it. Mine was definitely 1. <laughs> Mine, um, I think, was also 4. I, I, I do vaguely remember as a child, I think I had Resi 1 on the PS1. And I think I was probably not into it that much because yeah. I think I played like 10 minutes of it and then it freaked me out it. I remember the first zombie that but we have digressed massively from <laughs> yeah that. sorry but I was going to say as well what I saw in 4 and how good it looked it got me excited for a bit of what's happening with 8 where they're bringing in the third person perspective yeah and I thought oh they've done that re- they've done this looking so well mm. that I'm expecting the third person to be really good amazing although admittedly I think it should be a first person experience because right. you're meant to be that faceless Ethan I was going to say controversially I actually prefer first person in general so seven and eight being first person for me it doesn't it's not typically resident evil and i do understand that yeah. um but it's not my personal preference um will i play eight in third person just to give it a go yeah i will um, the issue i have with third person horror compared to first person horror is that you have an advantage in third person horror the yeah. thi- you can sit in a corner and rotate the camera and yeah. you can see down corridors you shouldn't be able to see that yeah. it, it brings it brings me out a little bit and I start yeah. and it's my own pl- fault I game the system yeah. I, I, I believe a game is like if you have a first person or a third person game you've designed it specifically to be played in that way yeah. Yeah. and then changing up that perspective brings in complications well, that I think it inevitably it. makes it a little more actiony yeah, yeah. 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 like 100%. I truly don't believe that I would have enjoyed Resident 7 as much as I did and I would have been scared of it 
as I was if that had been in third person. Yeah, I think that I making think so. that specifically first person was 100% the right decision. And I know that that's probably controversial to a lot of Resident Evil fans, and that's okay. Um, but I think that was... But seven's your favourite game. And seven is my favourite game. <laughs> and you can fight me on it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, bringing it back now to the Resi like 8... Um, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, the Resi 8 DLC. Yeah. I am both excited by it and really not excited by it and trying to do this without spoiling as much as possible yes <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> and i i, I thought about well. this <laughs> yes i i'm gonna play it right on cool. two levels okay first of all the one that's going to take the least amount of time for me to talk about is the new mercenaries levels which i'm both really frustrated by and really excited by because and that's from a personal level because yeah. i both your love for punishment. and fucking hate mercenaries for those of you who followed me on social media and followed us on social media we did a little get to know you and um, i talked about my hardest platinum being resi 8 not because the main game is hard it's an average platinum because i am a fool yes <laughs> yep. and i decided that my knife only run needed only to be done with the lightsaber right of course, yeah. of co- and they were like yeah you all you have to do is go through the mercenary levels and get ss rank i was like really cocky about it and was like this won't take me long that's fine it took me a year <laughs> it took me a year because the first levels of mercenaries okay not bad they give you the stuff to be able to go through the second lot of levels is, are in Vis- village of shadows and yeah, you okay. need to like have loads the, of points that you don't get cool, hardest difficulty <laughs> they one shot you when you are killed and you need combos you need bonuses you need the points levels and it's just needlessly difficult right so when the first part of this dlc was announced ages ago it was that you play mercenaries it's the same levels but you get new characters so for yeah. example you get to play mercenaries as heisenberg you get to play mercenaries as lady dimitrask um, which obviously, as uh, the thought of throwing chairs and desks at people as Lady D is like mind blowing to me. Uh, it's uh, the uh, dream. With your profession, it's great. Yes. It's <laughs> awesome. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so. Just imagine it's kids from the classroom just, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't mean it. If you are listening, I don't mean it. I love you all very much and you don't annoy me at all. Okay. Um, but, <laughs> but. So that that's interesting to me because I feel like it is, uh, even though I, I I have a real love-hate relationship with it, I 100% want to go and play it. I'm excited for it. Yeah. The main thing that I find frustrating is the um, Shadows of Rose DLC. It looks like a really meaty DLC. It looks like you're going to get yeah. a lot of hours out of it. It looks like you're going to get a full story out of it, which I'm really excited for. However... I have, and I'd be interested to get your opinions on this because I know you guys have played. I was wondering if you were saying you too then. Both of you. Um, have you not, played Resi 8? No, no. no. Okay, no. right. So. I can still give you my input. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Informed, but I'll try. So, without spoiling anything, obviously, at the end of Resi 8. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, wait, I'm going to put this. These certain stories that are resolved, and they are resolved. Ooh. Um, okay. I'm not going to say what those stories are or who the, it's, whose it's stories they are. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's resolved. There's, there's resolved issues there. However, I feel like they, they're leaning more with those resolved issues and bringing the daughter in as a DLC into more of a, it looks like we're going to go down more the, Chris, well, Chris Redfield Chris, fighting the BSA. Everyone knows Chris Redfield was an A anyway, yeah, but it yeah, feels yeah. like it's moving down. It's moving down into a, a more action yeah. a more action route, which it was with eight anyway, okay. but I feel like it's this trilogy is so rooted in horror and it's so rooted in the story of the family specifically. And it feels like we're moving very much away from that. And that is frustrating to me because I feel like they've got two different avenues now they're going down. They're either going to make this a trilogy and the last trilogy, the last in the trilogy is going to be totally without the family, just Chris Redfield going and doing yeah. all this action stuff. Yeah. Or they've written themselves into a corner and decided this isn't going to be a trilogy. It's just going to be seven and eight and that nine is going to be new, okay. which is even more frustrating to me because I feel like there's nothing, there's a lot that they could have, could have been done. Um, without spoilers, because this, this we is not both, a spoiler. I think we both said this to Yeah, the I would day. like Nine to be focused on Mia. Okay. I think there's a lot of plot points where we could discuss the things that happened to Mia in Seven, the things that happened to Mia in Eight, and that could be dis- uh, um, kind of discussed in that way. I don't feel like it's going to go down that route. That is frustrating. 
but I do understand why Rose's story is a DLC because personally I wouldn't want to play a full game of Rose with powers either because yeah, that not, doesn't yeah. feel Resident Evil to I, me either. I'll be honest, I'm not interested in the DLC uh, personally. Mm-hmm. I, I have no interest in biotic and all these weird powers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't feel right for me as a as a leader in a, mm-hmm. in a, a character in a game to play it this way. You're saying it looks meaty. I think it's meant to be roughly about four hours this DLC mm-hmm. to play, right. which... Is DLC length? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad it's DLC, DLC and they it's, haven't gone it's, like. It's around the same thing as we had for the Not Hero and the End of Zoe DLCs that were in Rising Seven, which I really rated. I really thought they were good DLCs. Um, End of Zoe is my favorite. If you haven't played it, you get to play your uncle and smack molded people in the face with your big hands. Uncle Joe, like isn't it? it? With Uncle Joe, yeah. Cool. Um, and the Chris Redfield DLC was great it was great fun um and it resolved another story in there as well so i see what they're doing they're following a pattern but it worries me for where they're going to take the next one because so in short what you're trying to say is that the the, the, the actual expo um what they showed us was what we expected it wasn't yeah. anything interesting like it wasn't no, it was interesting but it wasn't anything oh that's it wasn't new. new we've known about um, it all it is is your own personal trepidations that you're taking from that yeah battle, yeah I, I think as well that there's enough call and it does make me sad there is enough call from the general um fan base that they're a bit kind of like over the winter story they want to go back to that kind of i don't i don't i i gotta be honest with you i really don't i really like how ruth did in horror both of these were i think it was the refresh resident evil needed and i know that's a very popular opinion that's not anything controversial but why go back to redfield and go back to the yeah (laughs) does it not feel null and void then and i mean this is purely speculative obviously nobody's got any any details about resi 9 yeah but why would you go back on because there isn't a resi 9 no, there never will be. Please don't say that. No Resi Nine. That's what they. That's what I heard. They're going to go straight to ten, like Windows. Yeah. Oh my god! Get away from Resi me! The <laughs> literally Evil the Vista. most <laughs> offensive thing you have ever said on that podcast. That, that this podcast that I listened. I don't to know. Give one. me a couple of episodes. I'll <laughs> <think it's fine. laughs> But yeah, yeah, so, yeah. The most yeah. offensive thing I said was calling Luigi's Mansion the best fight. Yes, that was, that was horrific. Um, uh, yeah, so Resi was quite a small. Exploration it was only like half an hour. It wasn't even half an hour. Oh, sorry, it was an hour, but half an hour of it was just a countdown. countdown. Um, yeah. So it was an hour, but half an hour really. But the day before, we got the Silent Hill one, which I gotta be honest, I'm not. We're not going to talk about this much because we agreed we're going to do one point each. Yeah. But um, I will just say I'm very excited for all the stuff they're doing with Silent Hill. I, I literally, and I will say this. I nearly literally shat my fucking pants when I saw that Silent Hill thing like get announced. I was like, "What is happening? What?" Like, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I, I've it. never played a Silent Hill. Maybe I will. Um, I think that that's all I have to say. <laughs> re- remake of two is people are questioning the developers, but mm-hmm. that's always going to be the case. People will always question it, but they've got a great foundation to build upon. Yeah. Um, the film. I went back and watched the fir- the original film that they did mm-hmm. with the same director. They're bringing back. It's a solid film. It's a solid three-star horror film. I think it was good. It was interesting. Mm. It's got Angela from The Walking Dead in it. Um, uh, and means nothing to me, but sure. Oh. <laughs> I'm not the wrong person. I keep forgetting you've got no film or TV knowledge. Nothing. Um, I always do references for you. Nothing. Um, but that looks exciting. And then they've got a new, two new games mm-hmm. coming out as well, which will be interesting. So they did a lot in their expo. It was a very uncomfortable expo to watch with the hosts stood there very painfully yeah. just turning and looking. But... You know, and also you can buy a bunch of statues of Pyramid Head. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And you can, also, you can also get Chris Redfield statues as well with Resi. Yes. So yeah. buy your statues of your horror icons. And also, um, just as a little thing that also we're not going to talk about, but just to say we're not skipping over it, was the release of Overwatch 2. Oh, don't worry. It's fun. Next bit we're going to be talking about is what have we been playing? <laughs> Aha! Okay. <laughs> so, um, Paris with the unintentional segue. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not even the one I'm going to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> I think we were all collectively, so I think we'll move into what yeah. we've been playing. So I think it's fair to say that almost, for, well, 25 million people in the first 10 days yep. have been playing Overwatch 2 release. Yeah. yeah. And my God, I'm thoroughly whelmed. <laughs> I, I'm enjoying it. That's it. I think I've enjoyed it. I just think they've taken a lot of quality of life stuff out. Yeah. I, I think it's... It is whelmed is the right word because it's just more Overwatch but a bit different. Yeah, it's less Overwatch. Well, I I don't mean more as in yeah, yeah. an yeah. increase in quantity. I just no. mean it's the same thing but slightly more washed I out. Per- I personally find I'm really enjoying it. I love mm, playing Overwatch. Yeah. I really do. But there are things integral things that I loved about Overwatch One that I miss 
and I miss it. I miss them every time I play it. Cards at the end cards. of each one. Yeah, the big cards one. are the big ones for me. Um, loot boxes. Loot boxes. I mean, I get why they've done it. I mean, I don't have an. I, I do have an issue with changing the model. I know why they've done it. I get that. But there is nothing for you as a player to get yeah. now. And that is, I think, the most demoralizing part of it. I think new players are going to be struggling because they're going in and they're seeing all these wonderful skins that people had before. Because we were gifted a lot yeah. of skins mm. that were lovely. Um, actually, the day that this comes out, um, it's the Halloween events. We'll see what they do when, yeah. with yeah. that Halloween. And hopefully they do have something a bit more like, hey, if you come in for our seasonal, you get some free stuff. Yeah. And I think that would turn the community back on their side. Yeah. They're not going to do it. They are also, <laughs> there's double XP this weekend and next weekend too, right? It's yeah. uh, They've got double XP for the next two weekends because they messed up their launch so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they, 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 so quality of life, they remove the cards at the end, loot boxes, fire icon, yeah. I don't understand. Mis- moving mystery heroes out of arcades, so you have to play terrible arcade modes to get your challenges done. Yeah. Then, like, there is stuff I brought in that I like. I like challenges. Yeah. I wish you got more from your challenges rather yeah. than here's 60 coins. You can't even buy the battle pass if you complete everything during a regular season. Yeah. It's a very money-hungry game now. That's yeah. the real I, issue. I think the game mechanically feels better. Yeah. I okay. I think the experience of playing it is worse. Mm. Like, playing the actual game, like, the feel yeah. of the characters and some of the abilities they've changed, I think feels better. It feels a bit more solid. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the actual experience of playing the game mm. feels yeah, worse. It's, I think it's a much harder game to play as support now, which yeah. is... Unfortunately, yeah. we made that joke at the beginning, but the majority... Well, I, all, I support is my main class. Yeah. Support is my highest ranked class yeah. because I'm quite good at support. But now... You rely on one tank who has no shield, who runs off. You have to go after them, and you just get bullied as a support. Let, let me tell yeah. you now, right? And that's, not, somebody... that's not by other people. That's no, your no. own team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I just before Overwatch Two started getting into playing Mercy a lot. I I really like playing Mercy. I think it's fun. Um, I find it really difficult to play Mercy now because I'm the first person they pick off. Yeah. Like my death to heal ratio. As in general is terrible as Mercy because no one will leave me alone and then you've always got some Genji in the corner being like I need healing I need what, healing and some, I'm like I'm some, dead Genji someone also made the point that <laughs> nobody wants to play support because you have to do the challenges to advance the battle pass and the challenges don't incentivize playing support no, no. You, get, you get fast I mean the only one it does incentivize is you know you've got stuff like um, your BAPs you've got your stuff like mm. your uh, Moiras ones yeah. that can put a good amount of damage, damage out uh, Lucio is your big one I mean yeah, yeah. there's a reason why Lucio is one of the most played ones for the top ranked mm. people because they can put out damage they do speed boost so that it, yes. you, you can be more mobile yeah. rather than it just I don't know I, I think there's a there's quite a few areas where I'm still going to play it I'm enjoying it mm. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to not play it it's I think just... I've spent more time on Overwatch this month than I have any other game so yeah. I can't I, uh, I said that I was avoiding playing it I don't know why I just didn't want to get sucked in and I played like a game like, yeah mm, cool I'll be back tomorrow yeah, and that's that's that yeah. was it. You like you jumped on for the first time not too long ago, and yeah. you were back on the next night to play yeah. with people. Just, Last night I fun. saw you guys playing Overwatch, and I was really I, I, right. The Sims well, Four is free to play now, so I got it on the PC, and I was like beavering away. And then I came past and saw Josh on Overwatch with yourself and Josh's sister Liv, um, who I usually play with as well. And there was such a big part of me that was like, oh, but they're all on, they're all playing it, they're all playing it. But they were, but I was like, no, I'm determined to finish my mansion. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> I feel that. I mean, I I think I love. I think for me, as I've already mentioned, it's my it was my comfort game, Overwatch One. Yeah. And now I feel it's much harder to enjoy Overwatch One on my own. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm going to see a big switch in the way that I play. I used to play Overwatch One a lot on my own. Mm. Um, now I think it's only going to be as a communal game. Yeah. yeah I yeah. don't think I'm going to be playing it as a solo because I will just have to play either as support. Mm-hmm. Or wait seven minutes to play a tank yeah. Yeah. to then be killed immediately and blamed for the loss in the game. I think it's a lot. I think they did the right thing removing the chat. Well, like, the chat's there. It just, it, yeah. it, I don't know. It just feels. I, I'm still being abused as a healer. Yeah. I'm still being yeah. abused. I'm yeah. healing. Healer's bad. Da, 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 and you, but you can now see how you're doing and you're thinking, well, I've got 10,000 healing. What, what do yeah. you mean healer's bad? You're a tank with a thousand damage because you keep sprinting off and dying you're not even yeah. mitigating anything peep, but... peep, it's the same problem that uh, WoW raids used to have World of Warcraft raids where people go into the game playing their class and they have a 
pre-decided yeah. idea of what you are doing as your class or character. Yeah. And if you do not follow that to the T, they will just yell mm. at you for playing wrong. Yeah. Like, yeah. I just, I just this, play. this happened to me as a Mercy when I was playing on my own a little while back and I was staying with the group because the group was I mean, I will blame you because you're playing Mercy. But mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's unfair. I'm, I can't, I keep a lot of people alive. I res. I do like all the things that you're meant to do as a Mercy. Um, I stayed Who's with the damage? group. Um, what? Boost damage? Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, that's, that, I think that's now the yeah. thing. That's the thing is mercy now. You're not meant to be, you are meant to be boosting damage. That's yeah. literally your role. I, I will boost damage if I can see that your health is fine. If your health is not fine, I'm going to prioritize the health. So yeah. I was with this group and there was, I think a Cassidy I had like gone off somewhere and was like spamming the I need healing button. And I was like, I am not following one person yeah. into it, the depths I'm not, of hell I'm not there, sir. Sorry. to go and heal you when I've got five people over here. That is the best thing they brought into this game is that when someone says I need healing, if you look at them, you can hit the button which would be that I need healing in response you can click on it and it says come here if you need healing mm-hmm. and it is my favourite thing to do now and I will do it deliberately at people who are a million yeah. miles away because they're, they go I need healing come you die so I can live and you go well come no I'm, I'm keeping the tank here yeah, yeah. I'm keeping the tank, I'm keeping the other support, I'm keeping the other damage. Mm. Yeah. But there, you do see now a lot of times, even when I'm playing other classes, you spin off around the back, you try to take out the back line, which is the healing, and they're just self-healing each other, just trying to survive, yeah. whilst everyone else is off like, why aren't you healing me? It's like, you've got to keep your support alive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we can talk about Overwatch for hours. But yeah. what other games have you been playing? Well, I mean, Carrie's already mentioned it, hasn't she? Yep, yeah, go on. It seems for the one you're going to be talking about? No. What no. the hell are you talking about? <laughs> we'll move away from you then. <laughs> Make it very hard for me to segue as well. <laughs> <Sorry. doing. laughs> Okay, um, I am going to talk about a game that I actually finished. I put up that I platinumed it on Is it the social media. Graveyard Keeper? I'm going to talk about Roller Drome. Roller Drome, oh, nice. Let's talk about yeah. Roller Drome. Uh, Roller Drome is the latest game by Roll7, who are the people who make Oli Oli. Oh, yeah. Oli Oli mm. 1 and 2. And Which Oli you love as well. You love I Oli love Oli Oli World. It is my number two game of the year so far. <laughs> I absolutely adore it. What's number one? Elden Ring? It's Elden Ring, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Rollerdrome is I know the three game it, of the year. <laughs> it's like it's like four or five. It's really good. Um, it's like a bizarre crossover of Tony Hawk and Running Man. Well, the film Running the Man. The film Running Man. I love the yeah. fact you've gone for the film Running Man rather than uh, the film Roller. Is it Rollerball? I don't know. There's a rollerball where they're round on skates, but it's like a group of them. It's like um, with balls and they're like murdering each other in right. there. So mm-hmm. yeah. um, anyway, but I love Running Man. Yes. Sorry. So. Rollerdrome is like a... a film reference from Darren. <laughs> a film reference <laughs> from the 80s. Yeah. Mm. One of the less less signed Arnold Schwarzenegger films. <laughs> and one of my favourite Arnold Schwarzenegger You're films. You're welcome, audience. Love it. Um, love it. Rollerdrome is a game. I'm going to watch it after we record this now. Set, oh set in the future. Uh, it's in like the 2050s or something, I believe. Uh, where basically they've invented a death sport called Rollerdrome. Mm-hmm. where people compete, they're on skates, and they ride around an arena while they get shot at, and they have to kill everyone in the arena. Right. Uh, Rollerdrome is a mental score attack game, basically, where you try to keep your combo up. You increase your combo multiplier and keep it up by dealing damage. It goes right. up by killing enemies. It goes down if you take damage or you wait too long. Okay, so you have to be decisive. You have to be decisive, you have to be moving around. You always have to be shooting at someone, killing someone. Um, you unlock weapons as you go but basically it's like Tony Hawk in that you do the tricks, you do scores, you try to keep the combos up your tricks restore ammo Oh, that's so cool. you run low on ammo and you have these different weapons, they all run on the same ammo count which is like a bar Okay. so you start with the pistol which has 12 shots, the shotgun has 6 the grenade launcher has 2, I think the sniper has 3 but they're all on the same bar so if right. you fire four pistol shots, you'll have two sniper shots. That makes sense, yeah. Um, it's a percentage bar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That and is. the sort of thing... So for the maths challenge like carries, we can really go, ah! <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 math is not... Games that involve maths, not for me. There's a lot of times where you're like, you're shooting and you get down to a certain bar and you sort of, in your head, go, right, that's two shotgun shots. I need three. I'll do a trick. Mm. But you yeah. haven't changed weapon yet. I was watching the bar go up a little. You're like, yeah. Yeah, 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 but it is one of the best games I've played in a long time in terms of like that flow state mm-hmm. where you're playing it, and after a while you get into a thing of like there's a sniper over there. There's a mechanic called perfect dodge, 
Right. But if you dodge a sniper shot just before, or you dodge any attack just before it hits you, you go into slow-mo and your attacks do more damage. So you get into a flow of, right, right there's a mech there, so I'm going to go up this ramp, right. I'm going to have the sniper aim at me, I'm going to dodge it, I'm going to use that to destroy the mech's cannons, that'll keep my multiplier up, I'm going to hit this guy on the way past, it, do another trick to get the rest so of So it mech. just feels very fluid, like it, you yeah. go, right, I know where I'm going. Once there's... you get into the flow of it, and all the different enemies require different uh, approaches like there's yeah. one where if you don't kill them in one shot they put a shield up so you can't hit them for like five seconds there's one who if you hit them and don't kill them they teleport away yeah and a lot of it is just getting into that state of right I've gone up here I can see the enemies around he's gonna warp if I hit him the sniper's aiming at me but if I dodge I'll have enough damage with this charged up sniper shot to kill him yeah, yeah. So I'll hit him, but do I want to leave him alive because he also has the sniper so I can perfect dodge off him? It's that sort of, you know, it's like a, it, you get those feelings when you're doing like stealth games, for example, like the old Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Like, if I run this way, then this person's looking over there yeah. so I can take that person out before the other one. They'll be alerted and they'll come this way. And I can, it's, it's, yeah. it's pre planning. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it feels, and when it works out, I imagine this thing, when it works out, it's a very satisfying yeah. feeling rather than, and then when it goes yeah. wrong, you go, well, there's a lot of times <laughs> where you accidentally like shoot someone before you've charged up your shot and they don't die, and then you get hit in the back by like five missiles. And you're like, fuck, <laughs> damn it! Because then your mod, your bot player's gone. If you're trying to do the score attack, each level has challenges. So if there's a challenge to, like do all in one combo or don't get hit by a certain attack and you fail it, like, fuck. And this game right now is f- there's a free trial. There's a trial. trial. Free trial. If PS you've got, plus. is it PS Plus extra or premium yep. tier? You get the free premium, trial. Premium tier, you get a free trial on it. So but it's worth I, the uh, I highly recommend it. I how, looked how much people, is it right now? Uh, full price is twenty five quid, but it's own digital. You can only get digital. So digital. Yeah. I, I honestly would buy it for twenty five quid. I bought mm. it. It was on sale about a month ago for a third off. Oh, I nice. Great value. I'd buy it for twenty five quid. I'd buy it for a bit more. Really? People are complaining it's not multiplayer. Doesn't need to be. It's mm. fucking great. I mean, what was the idea? If it was a multiplayer, I assume like a death match arcade yeah, yeah. is what they're thinking. But yeah. like the best part of it is each level has challenges, which is like kill one of these people in one shot, right. kill three of these people in a window of time. So it's got a replayability. Like if you haven't got through all the challenges, you can go yeah. back to levels and do it. I mean, and the challenge, you don't have to do them all in one run as well. Oh, that's nice. So one might be do the whole thing with the shotgun. So you're like, right, this run's going to be dedicated to doing it with the shotgun. There's nothing more frustrating than doing ones where you go, oh, you have to get everything in this single run. It's like, that, yeah. I mean, that's like Tony Hawk's where you just get, here are all your challenges, get them done in whatever yeah. order you want to do mm. them in. It doesn't matter. But I uh, can't recommend it enough. It's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to play that now. I mean, I wanted to play it when it came out. I saw it being announced. I went, oh, that looks awesome. And I've just got 25 quid. a little much. I want to get, I should play the trial and see if it's yeah, something yeah. I want to do. Um, but I probably may take a little bit while. Yeah. So it's on a sale and then I'll get I, it. I think the only thing you might not get out of it for 25 quid is it's not the longest game in the that's, world. That's the it issue It has like 12 levels and it has a new game plus which is the same 12 levels with different challenges. Right. That's the only thing I'd say put you off. So game was, it it like, was it like four hours? Um, I'd say if you're going for all the challenges it's maybe like six for the first run and maybe like four for the second. Right. Like okay. a 10 to 12 hour deal. Oh, that's, that's not too bad but it's, it's still... It's great fun. I mean for what well, is essentially... A indie game price. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's what you expect, it is, isn't it? it is. Really, a lot of fun. Highly recommend. Mm. Cool. Um, Karis, what have you been playing then? If it's not Sims Four or Overwatch Two? Okay, so yeah, I've played Dead a lot Daylight? this month. Uh, no, it oh, is God. Disney Dreamlight oh, Valley. God. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's new favorite game. Listen, I really did not when this was when this phase came out. I was a bit like. Oh, I don't know, because I like as you. I, I'm I do play games like The Sims Four and stuff like that. Just those really chill games, like really cozy. I do quite like them. Um, when it came out and I started seeing everybody like post their pictures and their stuff from there, I was like, oh, okay, I'm I'm I feel like I'm missing out. So <laughs> I got it for my birthday, um, which was last month, and it is the most addictive shit I have ever played the game is like crack like yep. it's one of those games you go on and you think like I just need to chill out for an hour like after work I'm just gonna play an hour and suddenly it's like 11 o'clock and you have just been mining for diamonds with Goofy for three hours <laughs> um. <laughs> you're laughing you're laughing but I've, I've played it as well yeah. and, and walk around like the worry. most bizarre sentence I've ever heard in my life <laughs> I'm a Kingdom Hearts fan so I beat the shit out of people with Goofy here, yeah. I, here I am fishing just to make Wally my best friend so yeah. just, here I go it's, it's a really cool game it's it's actually got a, a story to it it's really sweet so you end up in this kind of uh, Disney world where this thing called the forgetting has happened um, the entirety of uh, Dreamlight Valley where everybody used to live has been taken over by like this dark entity 
empty, that has grown thorns everywhere, all the houses are abandoned. There's only three characters that still live there that want to regenerate the valley and get rid of the forgetting, which are... Four, four um, characters. Yeah, who was it? Goofy? You got Merlin, Goofy, mm-hmm. Mickey, and Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. Oh, it's like a Kingdom Hearts game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's your job, basically, to not only help the characters rebuild the valley, um, but to try and get rid of the forgetting and get the characters to come back. Um, so you end up kind of going into different worlds of different characters to kind of try and bring them back. You also, and I mean, listen, this, the one thing I will say is very cheeky about this game. Okay. And it is cheeky. I feel like Scrooge McDuck in particular, it's very cheeky. It's, okay. Um, it, it's got, um, what we'd call, is it Animal Crossing Syndrome? Yeah. Where they, with the money, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. So you, I have ended up in your world. You don't know me, Scrooge McDuck. You don't know me. Okay. You've got loads of money. You've just told me your favorite hobby is to dive into a pool of coins. And yet you want me to give up the two grand that I singularly have to rebuild (laughs) your shop? Your shop. You have the money. It's like the landlord devil Tom Nook. Yes, it is. It is. It is like that. The worst villain in video Animal Crossing. Yeah. Like, I get it. If Wally wants to come back, he needs a home. So yeah build Wally a home that's cool I ain't gonna rebuild Scrooge McDuck shop three times by the way so that I can continue to buy things off him very cheeky Scrooge listening to this feels like my drink has been spiked (laughs) (laughs) this one feels playing the game it's great yeah it's like Animal Crossing meets Disney yeah. With some more elements like Stardew, which is, it already has, but there are, there's no real, there's no combat or anything like that. There's it's no combat. Just, you've got, what is it, three magical items, which is like a pickaxe, a shovel, you and get a, a watering pickaxe, can. You a watering can, and you also get a, oh, a fishing um, rod. A fishing rod, okay. yeah. Animal Crossing. Cool. Yeah, for sure. It, and it, it's gorgeous. It's really nice. You get, you have to open different worlds by doing different tasks every day. Things can be as small as like, taking a selfie with Mickey, um, changing your outfit, or, it, you know, you get bigger points for rebuilding someone's house. or And it, it is, it's so it's addictive. It's Animal Crossing. It, it really is. so and addictive. It's, but it is, it is really nicely put together. I didn't feel like, oh, it's too difficult to get, you know, like sometimes there are RNG, like you've got a mine, you get to get ores. Yeah. I, I found myself getting coins very quickly in this yeah, game. I think good. it's, yeah. I think there's, very clear ways you do it. You just put someone who likes mining, so you get extra, and you just go around mining, and yeah. they double up your ore, and you sell it all, and you go, here you go, Goofy. For some reason, you've got 2.6 million coins just yeah. to send me, even though you could have rebuilt everything. Yeah. Here you go, and you just sell them to me, and then I'll put them back into your shop. Yeah. But the only thing that I will say that is, the only thing that is unnerving in this game, and I say that lightly, Goofy. because... When you are fishing, the Goofy does not know personal space, okay? Ooh. That guy yeah. is all up in your grill when you're trying to, like, <laughs> fish. And he literally will come from the other side of the valley. Literally. <laughs> like, you know, like, the, 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 the sprint from Get Out when he's, like, the, you know, yeah, it's, it's, he will sprint to you. And I swear to God, he's this far from your face. And you won't see this when you're listening to the podcast, but it's what I can only describe is this, like... <laughs> It's, it's, well, like, it's, it is dead it's behind the eyes. It's dead behind fishing the eyes. It's like, you better catch a fucking fish. You catch a fucking fish right now. And it's like, Enjoy okay, that seaweed. Like, <laughs> what, okay, go. What I'm seeing in my head is they have like the, um, description of evolution where, like humans and chimps have like a common ancestor. <laughs> yeah. There's like Dreamlight Valley and Kingdom Hearts and somewhere in the past they've just, they're the same yeah. game and someone's yeah. gone. It's so fighting. good. Or no fighting. fighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good if you are looking for a game that you can just chill out to. And it's actually got some really funny bits in it. It's really... I love it. I love it. I think it's a great game. Yeah, it, it is fun. Um, I, I've been playing that as well. I've been Fair. playing everything. But um, mm. the game I'm going to talk about is Cyberpunk 2077. Nice. Yeah. Back, yeah. back to 27 years ahead of where your game was, Darren. Yep. Um, I've gone back in and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's only going to take me two years to go back in and love it. Um, yeah, it was a birthday present for me a couple mm. of years ago, and then it just, it was buggy, it was yeah. messy. Gone in now, um, yeah, there's the odd, odd little bit, you go, what's going on there? Like, my car came and it was floating above the ground for a bit, but that was oh, like, hovercraft. once, but that was, that came across 30, I was 30 hours into the game, you go, it happens, I get in the car, it's on the ground yeah. now. You know what? You live with those things. There are people that go, well, that breaks the immersion. I can't play this game. I go, well, then, Good, don't fucking play it. You're not allowed to enjoy nice things. No enjoyment for you. Be miserable by yourself. But I think they've done a really good job with the game. They've obviously put a lot of effort to make it 
what it is. It's had a massive resurgence. It had a good update, which has made it really playable. And they've got another one coming in the next month, like 1.07 or something, 1.7. Yeah. And I think it's going to be the bit that everyone goes, fuck me, that's it. It, it feels like the same sort of vibe as uh, No Man's Sky had, where it came out and no, everyone sort of bounced off it because it wasn't what yeah, it was. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 they've sort of... I also bought No Man's Sky release. Same. I bought, <laughs> I, I bought a PS4 to play No Man's Sky, and oh. I thought it was fine. Yeah, I did but, as well. Um, yeah, it feels like that sort of thing where people bounced off it, and then in the background since, they've gone, right, let's actually get this where we want it. I've got to be honest, I think the reason why I bounced off it originally was not because of the game, because, I mean... A lot of people who now come in and go, well, the story's not very good. And I'm like, well, no, I'm really enjoying the story. Mm. But the thing is, it's not, you've got, you got one main story. is the same with everything. But there's all yeah. these other side plots that I'm just going off and doing them because they're their own contained stories and I'm enjoying that. Yeah. And that's what I want to play. And that, it, to be honest, it works for me. It's the sort of game I enjoy. I go, here you go. Here's a big open world. You can do it in any order you want to. Mm. There's thousands of collectibles if you want it. Yeah. There is far too much loot and there is so much loot. I think that's its only real criticism that you get a million bits. There's so, so much item management but fuck it it's good fun um, and the other day I got um, mugged and woke up in an ice, tu- ice uh, this isn't the game mugged and woke up <laughs> in a bar in, full of ice completely naked nice and I had to make my way out of a place by sneaking around and throttling people whilst my dick was hanging out yep. <laughs> and you know well, that was fun. That was a story. And literally, every person I killed and took items off them, not one of them had a pair of trousers for me. Oh, so okay. by the end of it, I was wearing tra- tra- trainers, a t-shirt and a hat. Good. And, oh, and some big pink sunglasses with my dick hanging out, just throttling people. Because they also get to do that during the character creation I, still. I was going to say, that I, I watched you play some of this and it is, it's a beautiful game. It is so nice to watch. But... I, I, I knew going into this game that the character customization was like really good. Like yeah. I'd heard that like the character customization is out of this world, which on its own would sell me because I, I, you know, I play the Sims. I'm all one for character <laughs> customization. Um, the, the, the customizing the size of your dick, I did not yep. expect. <laughs> Yeah, normal or big. I played uh, Saints Row 3 recently, and it's got the same, same thing. thing. It has, the same wait, thing. It has a meter called Sex. But wait, for men with little willies? I think, I can't remember. They've got one with a vagina. Yeah. I can be a guy with wait, a vagina. Wait, well, uh, you, what do you... You can't customise vagina. No, no, it's thing. just vagina. Okay. It doesn't do, like, lip length, no. <laughs> <laughs> vagina or vagina? Uh, oh. You can, can customise your pubes. Oh, okay. That's all you need. You have a nice star if you wanted it. Can you dye them? Um, yes, you can make different coloured different colours of pubes. <laughs> so, yeah... That, that's not why you should play a Here game. Here to share <laughs> the important parts of the game. If you had Cyberpunk and you bought it, like I did early on, and you didn't do the trade back in, like, well, it's full of bugs, and I bought it because it's full of bugs, to have a look at all the bugs, and now I'm angry there are bugs in it, and you trade it back in. I wonder if anyone's going to hear that. Um, and then you still have the game, yep. I recommend going and booting it back up now, playing it. I, or if I you don't now, if you've got the money back, it's only like 25 quid. Also, uh, also has a PS Plus Premium trial. I believe. Worth, yeah, it does. It's worth, yeah. and it's worth, it's worth a go in. I don't think the opening really sells the game, but you've got three different routes that you yeah, can go Yeah, I, I played like an hour of the trial, and it was one of those games where I could see it was going to be good, yeah. but it wasn't what I needed at the time. It's, so I'll probably go back in. It's a very slow there, start, though. but you've got three different, you've got three different things you can go down, and you've got different openings. And I reckon it's a game that I could complete, and yeah. I reckon I could go back in and play it again and still enjoy it. But I'm one of those people who will do every side story. I never ignore a side story. Yeah. Because at least it goes, main missions, side missions, like, great, side missions, off to side missions I go. But yeah, should we move past games you've played? Yep. Yeah. And move cool. a little bit into the PS Plus world. Uh, other yes. games we've played. Other games we've played. Um, so we're all mainly PlayStation. None of us have an Xbox, and we no. do apologise. We're not talking about what's going on, on Xbox uh, stuff. Switch doesn't really do free things, nope. and we're not going to go through like Epic and Steam and all these mm. ones. So we're just going to look at the PS Plus for free ones, as we are here as a bargain Ooh. bin gaming podcast. Um, PS Plus this month. Basic question: Good or bad? Was it a good month for PlayStation Plus or a bad month for PlayStation Plus? And you can talk about the initial three and then the following release afterwards because I think that's going to be the decision. Yeah, I, I think... I, I would say good. I think good. I think the three games were fine. Yeah, the basic extra yeah, games. They are yeah. good games that aren't... For you. Yeah, or aren't like extraordinary games. Yeah. They're ones where you play them all and you go, oh, this is like, cool. Yeah, so the games we got for the basic level were... Um, Justice 2, 
Yeah. Uh, Legendary Edition, but you only get the Injustice 2, you don't get all the other bits. Um, Hot Wheels Unleashed yeah. mm-hmm. and Super Hot with a three on that. And when they announced that, I think I was the same as you, Darren. Super Hot. Super Hot. I, I was like, what a bad month this is going to be. Yeah. I thought this was going to be a really I, strong I looked month. at it and I thought, oh, I, don't, I don't hate Super Hot. And that was it. I, I gotta be honest, like, and, and Josh can attest to this. I am terrible at actually using my subscription I, because I will look at the games and go, yeah, great. Or I will look at them and go, no. I add them into my library and then forget. Yeah. I, this was one of those months I looked at and thought, I don't think any of these three games really massively appeal to me. Injustice 2, I know of, I, I, like, that I, I've seen people play it before. It's fun. It's just, not, not for, for me and then when I looked at the other two I was like oh yeah okay I did play a little bit of Super Hot well we'll talk about that um, well we won't but <laughs> Super Hot's cool I, I, do you know what I thought it was cool I, I didn't it's not for me I did find it a bit of a jarring experience Um, however I can completely appreciate why it's a cool it's, game it's an interesting like, concept yeah my, my comment always on Super Hot is that it's a really cool central idea and it mm. does too much weird fucking shit with the rest of the game the story yeah. really works for me but that's I, because it's not for me I mm. love something that thinks it's smart than it is yeah like another, <laughs> that's another that's reason good indie funny game that's was, exactly uh, the reason he married me uh, another good indie game from recent <laughs> was uh, Inscription I have the same problem yeah. with that is that it's a really cool game that gets bogged down by all its weird story mm. bullshit very much um, and then obviously the other one was Hot Wheels Unleashed which I did play a bit of and thought this is perfectly fine but I thought it was going to be more wacky than it was I'm going to be my, honest with you out with the three that's the one I looked at and thought oh no oh, I, <laughs> I will never immediately write off a PlayStation Plus game because no. there's been so many weird ones from the past that like we both got fucking addicted to Horizon Chase Turbo we both platinumed it and after that <laughs> I will never completely write off a PS Plus game and I, I looked at that went that looks kind of okay and then play them this is fucking this is great. addictive <laughs> yeah but I got those those first three came out I think we all thought it was going to be a bad month mm. and then they announced what was on the premium and extra tier and they brought yeah. out an extra was it 20 games or something, something? like that um, I read and, the first game and was happy and it was a very strong game yeah. so I think a, yeah. I think we can all collectively agree it was a good month good month yes good, good month, month. month. Um, thumbs up. So there's a lot of games there to talk about, but what we thought would be good was, yeah, thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the thumbs up the camera. Yeah. That's all right. I'll Everyone give the viewers well something. Done. Well done, you. <laughs> um, but what were your, what was the one game that comes out that you think everyone should give a go to is the question, I suppose, um, of those. It's maybe not the best game on there, but it's the game you think, hey guys, that's a game you should go play. Um, I can open that up to whoever wants to go first. I'll go. I, uh, I am an odd over this one between two Lamented, of them. pined after the Yeah, answer. I had thought two of them that I was going between. But I'm going to say that people should try uh, Dragon Quest Eleven Because mm-hmm. I like Dragon Quest. Beautiful. I can't say I'm a Dragon Quest expert. Mm-hmm. I've played a couple of them before. There was one on, I think, the DS. So it was like eight or nine. And that's a fucking great game. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Dragon Quest Eleven S, Echoes of an Elusive Age. That is. That's the full title. <laughs> so, um... Basically, Dragon Quest XI came out, and it was good. It then came out on the Switch mm-hmm. with this version that has some extra stuff built into it. And, and then went... they then released the Switch version back on everything else. Right, okay. Mm. So that's what they said. And it's just a big JRPG. It's just a big JRPG. I think this is something I would like to see more of on the PS Plus Premium and, like, uh, yeah. extra and stuff. I want big, J- I want exactly. big, big RPGs, JRPGs, yeah. ARPGs, WRPGs, whatever you want to call them. I want big. A lot RPGs. of what I've enjoyed so far in there is like little games that I'd forgotten about. Like yeah. the first PS Plus Premium game I downloaded was Pat Upon because it's awesome. It is a good game, um, but I like seeing big, like RPGs, big sort of mainline games. It's a lot of stuff that I like but never sort of bit the bullet on. Yeah, mm-hmm. but, I think they need to do more stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Following on from yours, I mean, my selection is similar vein, because again, it's another one of the Dragon Quest games, but is a very, I think, very different style of yeah. Dragon Quest, because I would recommend everyone check out Dragon Quest Builders 2. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the cutest fucking game known to man. What, yeah. It's adorable. <laughs> it is lovely. It's a lovely little uh, sort of action role-playing sandbox game, which allows you to do very much Minecraft elements of building yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. But it, the, way really they, the way they've done Dragon Quest Builders 2 is it follows on from Dragon Quest 2, um, but then you're like in a big sandbox and you're building, you're helping people, you have to survive a night when there are attacks coming. It feels Minecrafty, but there's a story to it. Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, it's like Minecraft actually had a full proper story. And it sounds awful because people go, well, there is a story mode in Minecraft, but it's not really a story mode. No. Um, it's third person, it's a lot of fun, and it is, um, not, uh, cause yours is a proper JRPG, yeah. 11, which is, you know, 
turn-based attacks, this is very much more like, I suppose, Nino Kuni 2, in the way they've got it. It's that open, you just slash and run things to smack them. Yeah. Run things to smack them. Um, and I think it's a really, one, well, cute game, but I think it's a good, fun game. I bought yeah. this on Switch ages ago, and now it's on PlayStation. I'm probably going to play a lot more of it, but I think it's a perfect... It's a perfect Switch game as well, yeah, seriously. Yeah, I really think a lot is. of the dra- I think a lot of the Dragon Quest games are good Switch games. They're good for on the go. Yeah. Um, but I would recommend everyone checks this one out. Again, I don't think it may be the best game they've got on this month, but I think it's one of the more fun games in the game that you probably missed. Yeah. Because it's going to hit a very niche group. It's those people who love JRPGs, like mm-hmm. Dragon Quest, who go, oh, it's a Dragon Quest game. I'll go check it out. Or those who like these sandboxy games. It's not one that's going to be on everyone's radar. So, yeah, my thought is check that game out as I think it is potentially the easiest, most laid back game they've released this month. Probably, Just yeah. sit there. I the only so. other one that could fight it maybe is Hohokam because I think that's quite a laid back Ho-Hokum. game. Fun. But mm-hmm. this is, I think, the most laid back game. There is a Dragon Quest Builders one, which I haven't played, but two, by all accounts, is better by yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Um, you've gone a different route, though, haven't you? I have. I'm here to bring the tone down slightly. Um, <laughs> so, the game that I chose it's but is... But the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favourite. Uh, the, no, the actual game I've chosen is uh, but fart the game. Um, yep. No. <laughs> It's uh, it's limbo. It's uh, it's limbo. I Classic. think limbo is. It's like quap where you have to get under a really low bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. my god! That's the it's... level of our comedy a really low bar. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just to give you a bit of background about limbo, limbo is a um, it's a puzzle platform video game. It's uh, it was done by uh, Play Dead, which is an independent studio. It was published by Microsoft Game Studios. It was originally for Xbox three hundred and sixty. Um, and then came to PS3 and now yep. people can play it on PS5 yeah. and PS4. Um, so essentially it is a black and white game. It's based on kind of like German, like Folklore, noir yeah. and German expressionist stuff. So the play, like the style of the game is really it's unique. It's a really cool looking game. It's it a is a game. very cool looking game. It is a really like. It's a sad game. It's, it's very it's sad. sad. Um, it's it's all about a, a, a boy who's kind of he's nameless. Oh, he, I won't give too much about. I'm not going to give away it, too much yeah. away. I'm just going to say at the beginning he awakens in the middle of the forest on in the end with of a hell. big spider um, with a big weird spider that tries to kill him, and that is Fuck all that I'm going spider. to. That's Fuck all that I'm going to say about the story of it. I just think that it is. It, it's it's creepy in the right ways it's sad it's it's melancholic it's probably the best yeah. way to put it rather than sad wow, that might be the best word we've ever said on this podcast yeah. okay. <laughs> but it is it's did, did you miss games. butt fart a minute ago yes, sorry, I, did. <laughs> I said it I hope I didn't miss I it I mean listen it's not one that I would specifically put on if you've had a bad day yeah. you know what I mean it's not something that I would go yeah I'm really sad today I'm gonna put this on for fun um but it is, it's a really, it's something really different. And I think that's the reason why I wanted to pick it from the rest I, of it. Because I, it's I've you've played got... it before. You've played it before, I've Darren, haven't you? Yeah. Um, it's, I think I played it when it came out, like, original 360 or something like that. Mm. So I played it years it, ago. It was one of the big, like, kickstars, I feel, of the console indie scene. Mm. Yeah. Where I remember Xbox Live used to have its, like, Summer of Arcade. And I think that's about the time this came yeah, out. Yeah, definitely. But it was the originator of everyone's favourite genre, Child in Spooky World. Yes. Um, Most recently, was it Little Nightmares 2? Little Nightmares and Little Nightmares 2 are another one. Um, Um, There's lots of them. (laughs) But yeah, it was like this something different stylistically yeah. than had been seen before and it really kicked off that that led into things like uh, Fez was another big one case yes. story yeah um, I think that's would you main... argue it's well, like, that's it's okay I just I just thought that that was the main reason I picked it was yeah. because you've got so much choice in, in this month but uh, uh, the only one that I think is similar is obviously Inside we which talked about that yeah. Yeah. Um, if I was g- gonna pick one we of talked the two, about this off off cat, yeah, you yeah, guys yeah, aren't sorry. having like an episode where you've forgotten yeah <laughs> Like, did they mention this? <laughs> um, it is similar to Inside. Personally, I would still pick Limbo, um, just because I think it is it is so different, and mm-hmm. it, the style of it is so different. I think and it's it a looks great, really like, cool. It's a great introduction to this style if you haven't yeah. touched it. Mm. Um, and very much everyone should play it. Everyone, yeah. should, everyone play should play it. it. Yeah. Um, oh, which we all think is everyone should play it because we have made a collective top five of you to dip your toe into this month. Yes. So again, maybe not the best games. But the games that we think are the ones you should go into. I think that's the way we've looked at this month. So um, I've got the list here of our top five. Mm. So in number one, we all collectively think Limbo should be the one that everyone plays, which we've already discussed as a game um, and why we think it should be played. Quest, um, 
I said Quest Eleven as well. Quest right? Eleven, uh, comma, Dragon. Quest Eleven, Dragon. Yeah, Dragon <laughs> Quest Eleven S, something for an A, <laughs> yeah. two guys. It's a long name. Um, we put game, that beautiful game. Yeah, second yeah. one. Number three was Inside, which is made by the same people who did Limbo. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, they made some big additions to it. I think the story is. It's, it's probably more exciting they've made a lot of developments with it I just yeah. have a soft spot for Limbo which is why I think yeah. Limbo should be I, I personally of like I've played the two uh, I haven't finished Inside yet I think I prefer Inside mm-hmm. just because I think Limbo is very cool stylistically I think it's very basic sort of strong gameplay it's very opaque in its mm. world and its story and stuff like that and from what I've played of Inside it has such a cool world and sort of background you're building up like there's a bit i just played where you're walking in a line of people who have been like oh. brainwashed or something yeah, it's good. and every now and then you have to stop on a square and like they all do an action mm-hmm. and you're like right this is some weird like fucking brainwashing shit that's going oh, okay. on and you're also dressed in red which i think is an homage to the little girl in the red coat from shinter's list it probably is Ooh, which yeah, is a really like... cool like touch and a really cool wow, thing it's the okay. only color in the game is mm. you have this red jumper on oh wicked okay. and it's okay. this cool like washed out aesthetic I just think I'm, it's got more I'm going on put a pin in the background two film no, no, references I know fucking have you watched both of them uh, I haven't watched Running Man I've watched Shin's List what you <laughs> Man, no. Nope. I mean, I'm glad you've watched Shindler's List out of the two of them. To be fair, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, inside was our number three. Number four is Dragon Quest Builders two. Good shout. And yeah. then number five, we went for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Um, they did release a lot of Assassin's Creed this month on there. Um, and out of the what was it six of them? Yeah, I would say only two are worth checking out. Yeah, okay. um, I wouldn't bother with any of the Chronicles personally. I wouldn't bother with Syndicate. Absolutely. Syndicate is bad and yeah. upset us. The 3 remaster probably deserves another look. I, I think people just need to go back and see that 3 wasn't that bad. Um, but I do think Odyssey is, I think, arguably for most people, the most fun of the most modern yeah. trilogy. So. It's yeah. my least favourite of the modern trilogy Same. because yeah. of how bombastic it is. I like the grounded nature of Origins yeah. and I liked um, Valhalla. But, you know, I think it's a really fun game. You've seen it as well, Karen, yeah. played, and you think it looks fun. It does uh, look fun. And I think it's got a replayability to it because you've got the different characters and the different choices. So yeah. you've got potentially different endings to it. I, I, I like Odyssey. The reason it's my least favourite of the three is that it somehow manages to have too much game and not enough game. Yeah. Like, Valhalla has too much game, but it commits to having too much game. Yeah, So like, I agree there's a lot of shit to do everywhere. Odyssey, you can finish that game. I think you've explored half of the map and like a yeah. third of the side stories. You're like, yeah. What are we doing here? The last okay. thing I had to do... Credits this- have rolled. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. The last thing I had to do on there was, uh, you know, you have to uncover all the regions. Yeah. And one of the regions I hadn't even gone into. But yep. because it's on a mountain, it looks like it should be shadowed. So I assumed I'd be in there, but actually it's a shadowed tiny sliver of reason. It was the last thing I had to do. It was very frustrating. Yeah. But I think Odyssey is worth checking out. It makes on there. a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, anything else worth mentioning on there? We've already mentioned Super Hot. I mean, it's got some Yakuza games in there. Yeah, now like 0 to 5 are all on there. So all, all on there if you want play to. Play them. They're all varying quality. Um, Castlevania is a oh, different sort of Castlevania. It's great, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> and Everyday Shooter, which it looks interesting. It looks so weird. I kind of want to play it. I would say the five to check out this month would be Limbo, Dragon Quest XI, Inside, Dragon Quest Builders 2, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or Assassin's Creed 3, I think is fair to put in there. Yeah, um, and, so. you know, Super Hot is worth checking out for five minutes. <laughs> Stop giving a thumbs up to the camera. I, oh, God. I knew, I knew filming this would be a bad idea. Between Darren and... Just for it, Darren somebody hanging the, who hanging hasn't. the camera loves oh. me, and Some, I love it too. Someone who hasn't, isn't going to watch this on YouTube, but is just... <laughs> Josh has got his head on the desk right now because uh, Darren has just sent a very sexy little kiss to all of you watching well, on YouTube. Well, I said, I said he was tanging the camera. Is actually why I put my head on the desk. Oh, is he? <laughs> I, I love you all, and if you don't love me, fucking too right. <laughs> But yes, um, so that brings us to sort of the close of what this episode is. Yes. Um, I'm glad you've joined just for our initial venture. I think it's uh, a nice little concept, a bit of like, if you want a bit of a break from the competition, just mm. to chat about it games. Is, it is nice to have a game where I feel like I don't have to fight you both. Yeah, it's you nice. Know? I yeah. can't wait for our next episode recording where we will fight. But, yes. Um, those of you who have joined us as this has come out, uh, just to let you know, we have now launched a Twitch channel as yeah, well. Yeah, we have. Um, which will be starting at the beginning of November. Um, mm-hmm. We will be doing 
doing um, three streams a week where one of us will show up on different days, where we'll be doing multiplayer games, games from our fighting episodes, and games that we just want to play in a free play, which we'll open up to you to vote for on social yep. media of like the two choices that we're looking yeah. at, which may be some of these games we've talked about today. Maybe. But yeah. it'd be really good if you go across, give us a follow on there, um, even if you don't come along for it, but we'd love to do it because we're all chatty people. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, we also have YouTube, um, which at the moment is Discount Pod. They are moving into giving everyone handles on YouTube. Ooh, they are, yeah. So um, we're hoping to get the app for Discount Pod. I don't think we're going to be fought for it. So yeah. um, we should get that one, which will make it easier to find us. So do check us out on YouTube if you want to see a full edited version of this yes. or any of our previous episodes. I mean, well, if you don't check out the YouTube, you're never going to get to see Darren's sexy kiss. No. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, fucking make your decisions, I guess. <laughs> um, and I wouldn't influence you either way on that one. <laughs> It's sultry, sultry, man. Um, but also on top of that, we are looking to start getting some Let's Plays out there. So it'd be good to go on and check on there. So there'll be episodes from our Twitch stream will go on there. If you don't feel like going on Twitch, they'll go on there as well as um, yeah. those. And lastly, do check us out on our socials, which mm-hmm. is at Discount Pod on Instagram. Mm-hmm. We also have our own uh, socials, which are all our own names, which are at Discount and then our name. So Josh, mm-hmm. Darren and Keris, respectively. Do remember it's Discount with two Cs. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yep. On all of those things, it's discount with two Cs. Um, and we are also hoping that you'll come across because we're going to start thinking about genres um, coming, upcoming and we'd love to you to come along and do some voting and give us some suggestions yeah. about what you would like to see we us do. We burned all our creativity on the first place. <laughs> yeah. So please we come need along help. Yeah, and help us. Um, but thank you for coming along again. Anything mm-hmm. else you two want to say? No. No, I think... Uh, yeah. <laughs> just, like, just no. No, yeah. never want to speak again. That's all done. Coming. No. Yeah. But no, re- really appreciate it. Do make sure you find us, follow us, like mm-hmm. us, give us a review, subscribe, all of those good bits because it really does help us yeah. Yeah. get more people out there and we can get more of a community and then we can potentially think about doing a Discord at some point for people to jump yep. into. Yeah. So... We just need we just need to see if you guys are interested and liking yeah. it. Um, definitely let us know what you thought of how this episode worked. Yeah. If you think any changes should happen, and then we'll probably change it because we change things constantly. Yeah, we, yeah. Aren't, we aren't very committal. We changed hosts once. Yeah, we did. And how oh. poorly that's worked out for you both. How poorly. <laughs> oh. um, thank you all for coming, um, and we'll catch you all next time. Bye. Super hot. Love you. Super hot. <laughs> Super hot. Oh God. <laughs>